I'm not drawing on a rat face. I'm not doing it. Happy Tuesday, Potterheads. Today we are talking about chapter 19 of Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban, and today we are going to examine three things. First, should Peter have actually been in Gryffindor? Second, did Sirius actually come to Hogwarts to protect Harry? And third, shouldn't Snape know the whole truth here? But before we jump into it, if you have no clue what I'm talking about, go ahead and read the chapter recap in the description below. And if you're new here, welcome. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm so happy you're here. If you want to catch up, you can click the card in the top left to watch all of the seasons that I've done so far far, and please subscribe and ring the notification bell so you always know when I upload. I'm actually going to reverse my order here so that we can get through the thinner topics first. So first, shouldn't Snape know that Sirius wasn't working for Voldemort? We know Snape is a Death Eater. It's just a fact. So shouldn't he know that Peter was actually the one working for Voldemort the whole time, being the spy? Snape's allegiance to Voldemort seems to be pretty strong until Voldy tells him that he's going after the Potters. This is why we desperately need a Marauder series, not because I want to see all of their schoolboy adventures, but because I need a timeline on all of this. Since we don't have that, I need to make some assumptions here based on stuff that we do know. We do know that Voldemort has a thing for gathering his closest followers together to discuss things. And we know that he's not afraid to discuss the activities of his spies in front of those followers. Since Snape comes to Dumbledore with the information that Voldemort is planning to kill the Potters, I think it's safe to assume that Snape is already pretty close to Voldemort at that time. So surely Snape would have been aware of Peter's presence in Voldemort's plans. Accordingly, he also would definitely have noticed that Sirius was not a member of Voldemort's followers. So this whole thing in this chapter, as Sirius accuses him, actually is just about Snape's schoolboy grudge, rather than Snape trying to enact real justice. Snape sucks! You guys, I'm sorry to keep going on with all of the Snape hate, but throughout most of this book, he really is not painted in a good light. Yes, I know it's plausible that he never knew about Peter somehow, or that Voldemort used to be more secretive with his followers. Entirely plausible. But given the information that we have to go on, I just have to imagine that Snape had some knowledge of what was going on. So his desire to give Sirius over to the Dementors really is even more evil than if he was just trying to satisfy the law. Okay, and now to my point about Sirius. I'm pulling out a couple of quotes just from this chapter chapter that actually make me question whether or not Sirius came back just to enact vengeance upon Peter. First, Sirius, in talking about seeing Ron's picture in the newspaper, says, And the caption said the boy would be going back to Hogwarts, to where Harry was. And when I read that, I immediately thought, Wait, did Sirius actually come back to also protect Harry? But right away, I realized, No, all of his actions so far have pointed to his only motivation being to find Peter. But then I thought about it more, and thought that maybe he was coming not to kill Peter just for revenge, not just for being put in prison for that crime already. And then later in the chapter, Sirius says, I realized he was at Hogwarts with Harry, perfectly positioned to act. Perfectly positioned to act. That's it right there. Sirius could almost certainly have escaped Azkaban any time that he wanted. It didn't take him 12 years to figure out any of the means that he used to escape. The moment Peter exploded that street, he knew Peter had merely escaped rather than actually died. So he could have escaped Azkaban almost instantly and gone on the hunt for Peter and probably ultimately lived a better life. But revenge on Peter just wasn't enough motivation to take that risk. It's not until he sees that picture of the Weasleys in Egypt and realizes that Peter is near Harry that he gets the motivation to do something. This whole time, I've been thinking he escaped just to kill Peter and nothing more, but no. He's been peak Gryffindor this whole time. It's not until he has someone to save, someone to protect whom he loves dearly, that he actually gets the motivation to act. After all, he's clearly keeping an eye on Harry during the whole book. He's not just going after Peter, he's keeping an eye on the kid, too. And now it's time for topic number three, which I imagine will be the bulk of our time. Third question of the chapter, did Peter Pettigrew actually belong in Gryffindor? And if we conclude yes, what went wrong? I've heard multiple different voices online lately, and the timing is odd, uh, comparing the Harry generation to the Marauders generation. Harry is obviously his dad, Ron is obviously serious, Hermione usually gets stuck with Lupin, and poor Neville usually gets stuck with Peter. And to be fair, Neville and Peter during their first few school years are extremely similar. Unremarkable, unnoticed screw-ups who tend to get ignored, and both of whom are constantly questioned about why they got put in Gryffindor. With Neville, it's more about who he is at the beginning that make people think he belonged in Hufflepuff. And with Peter, it's his actions later in life that make some people peg him for a Slytherin. But I think we have a little Robert Frost situation here, with two roads diverging. The roads being Neville and Peter, and the divergence with the... Well, I mean, it's a bad metaphor, but you know what I mean. Yes, that Neville and Peter started off similarly and then took different paths, and that's why they became vastly different people. It wasn't that bad of a metaphor. You should have more confidence in yourself. I'm 
I'm so touched. Is this still arrogant if I'm pretending that was a different character? Anyway, there are some pull quotes from this chapter that make me question Peter as a Gryffindor in the first place. You never did anything for anyone unless you could see what was in it for you. That to me reads as very quite Slytherin-esque. They tend to be looking out for themselves as number one, which is not necessarily a bad trait. Then Peter says, I was never brave like you and Remus and James. Just like a firm admission that he lacked bravery, at least in comparison to his friends. And then the last quote I wrote down for this was, His own stinking skin meant more to him than your whole family. Again, looking out for himself above all else, which again, not very Gryffindor. Now, I've mentioned this before way back in book one when we talk about why Harry and his friends get sorted the way they do. But I believe, and I think it's pretty well supported, that the Sorting Hat sorts students aspirationally, or based on what they have the potential to become, and usually not just based on what they already are at age 11. For example, like I said then, Hermione at age 11 was a dead ringer for Ravenclaw, but what she had the most potential to grow into was her courage, her bravery, and putting herself out there for others. So, having that established, let's get back to Peter and Neville. They do have some things in common, most of which, I think, was their potential to grow into their bravery and their courage, and to show the world the truly powerful wizards that they are. Peter is clearly a talented wizard. He became an Animagus, and we all know the hero that Neville became. So I really think what they needed to learn was confidence, and a good house to instill that in you is Gryffindor. But I genuinely think there's one major difference, among other small ones, that marks the turning point where they separate from being similar. And that's the fact that Peter had friends, and Neville didn't quite have friends. Peter is a firm and solid fourth member of the Marauders, but Neville never really seems to have any close group of friends exactly like that. I mean, I hope so, but we never learn about it, and it never really seems to be with anyone who would have the same prestige or attention as a James or Harry Potter. At the very least, he spends probably a solid year without friends. So Neville was kind of thrown into the deep end, if you will. He had to learn courage and bravery and how to put himself out there for himself. Peter, always looking to live in the protective shadow of the biggest kid around, never really had to learn that bravery and courage. Sure, as Sirius says, he prioritizes looking out for himself above others, but we've seen that in other characters too. Arguably, Fred and George have a bit of that. Percy, to an extent too, and other characters who might not be so great, like Lockhart. The difference is that these other characters, except Lockhart, look out for themselves first by being the best versions of themselves. Peter was kind of incubated by his close, very brave, brave Gryffindor friends, so he never had to learn to be brave and stand up for himself like Neville. He never had to go through any of those growing pains. I think that's why we see him willing to live and hide as a rat for 12 years rather than wanting to be a human. And why once he finally does come back, we see him sniveling and begging like a child. Peter was never forced to grow into his full potential as a Gryffindor. So to answer my original question, yes, Peter almost certainly belonged in Gryffindor. Because Gryffindor was the house that probably would have helped him the most had his friend's situation been slightly different. Oh man, when you think about it, the Sorting Hat is kind of responsible for James and Lily Potter dying. Is that worth an entire video? Meh. Maybe years from now once we're done reading the series and I'm desperate for content. Okay guys, time for this week's fun question of the week. This week, we are going to Shag, Mary Kill the three characters that I talked about in this episode. So Shag, Mary Kill for Snape, Sirius, and Peter. I'm going to obviously kill Peter, like, that's just obvious. Uh, oh, oh, Shag Snape, gross. Oh no. <laughs> and Mary Serious. I mean, once he's cleaned up, he's probably going to be like a really fun life partner. Oh God. Let me know how you would do this in the comments below. Okay guys, and that's going to be it for us this week. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you like what I'm doing and you want to follow along, you can subscribe and make sure you ring the notification bell so that you always know when I upload. And if you really love being a part of this community, there are ways that you can support me right now in the description and on screen. Here are some other videos that I think you will like if you liked this one. Your assignment for next week is to read chapter 20. That's the Dementor's Kiss. So make sure you read that by next Tuesday. And until then, happy reading. Nox.